<laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, Erin. Hi, Olivia. Uh, today is our first YouTube Live and Originals um, kickoff series monologues, which is a digital diary of sorts. Um, we're going to be covering a lot of different topics with a lot of different um, talent. But today we have Halima Aiden, Amanda <laughs> Murphy, and Pietro Baselli joining us from around the world. Um, from their homes, and um, you know, we're in our topic today. We're going to talk about the moment and the different variations of what that moment may be, what it what it's been for your career, and um, you know, let's kick it off. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you yes. remember when uh, there was a specific moment in time that you knew modeling or the fashion world was for you? Like mm. you just, like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would definitely say hmm, I had a couple aha uh -huh moments in my career. One being when I first competed for Miss Minnesota USA. Um, I was the first contestant to wear a hijab in burkini. And I think that is how like news spread to IMG models to scout me. Um, but you know, there was never a hijab wearing model before I came along. So you know, it was hard for me to even imagine a career in fashion or, you know, like mm -hmm. to think that I could be that person because before, you know, I got signed by IMG, there were no hijab wearing models. So it shows you just how much of a risk you guys had to take to believe in me because like today, fast forward, it's not uncommon to see a hijab wearing model. And, you know, like you guys were the trailblazers and pioneers when it comes to that. Um, but my moment would probably be in the office with you guys. And it was a four hour meeting with um, the agents at IMG. And we didn't just talk about fashion and like, okay, what editorial do you want to do? We talked about UNICEF, we talked about what it meant to have a career. And I really think, you know, I'm very grateful for my agents because it could have just been a one, one and done type of thing or a trend that disappears, but it really became something that was, that would change the lives of not just myself, but many girls now who are entering wearing the job. I remember specifically that day when you came in. Which was um, I was so nervous, Aaron. <laughs> I don't believe so. You were so friendly and so nice and so approachable, and, and you just had a lot to say. It was it was a lovely meeting. Um, yeah, but how about you, Amanda? So, was, um, was there a specific? <laughs> Yeah. Um, so for me, modeling, it originally started out as a way for me to try to find an avenue to afford college. And um, I saw modeling as an opportunity and decided to go to New York to pursue it. And I just really fell in love with the whole thing. You guys have just been amazing throughout my, gosh, I've been with you for over 10 years now. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, so I started that as, as a means of, to uh, get an education, and I, and I did, I got that, and I stuck with you guys as well. <laughs> um, if you guys don't know, Amanda, radiology, right? That's, radiology that's... technologist, yeah. Um, but you guys stole me away from that. <laughs> um, so, I, so I did do part-time as a radiology tech for two years while I was also flying all over the world full-time. I don't know how I managed to do that, um, but I'm, I'm grateful for all the opportunities that modeling, modeling has given me to just see the world. Um, I've also, you know, yes. Sorry, sorry. I was just going to say it's really interesting because all the three of you on today, you all came from, you know, you, you were sort of making your way already. Mm -hmm. and, and you know what, it wasn't like you went to school for fashion or anything like that. Like you were you were all like charting your own course and, and, and doing things different. Like Pietro, Pietro was a professor, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love that. My, mo my moment, uh, I mean, I, I'd say, like, because my modeling career has actually been really long. Uh, and my moment, I 
I think there's been a couple. Uh, I started modeling when I was six years old, so a very young age. And I don't think when you're a child, you have a moment where you realize, oh, this is real, right. you know? Like, there used to be campaigns, there used to be like billboards in the street. And for me, like as a child, you think, oh, okay, that's whatever, you know? <laughs> um, and then when I went to college and when I was at university, I used to like, hide the fact that I was a model. I was a real nerd. I was really dedicated to studying and doing engineering. Uh, and I always thought that you know, modeling is something like secondary way. I never realized that, you know, I I had done so much of it. Um, and I think the first moment that I had that I realized how important modeling was for my life was um, after I graduated and just before I started my PhD, uh, I, I was putting together my CV, right? And uh, so I put together my CV, uh, and it's all a list of like academic achievements, basically. Like, oh yeah, I won this scholarship, uh, published this paper, da, da, da. I was really proud of it. And then I went to speak with a career advisor, uh, and he's like, he's looking at it, and I'm like, all like proud, you know? And he's like, this is all very good, but you, you, have, no, you have no work experience. And I'm like, well, hold on a second. Yeah, I, I've been working for like 20 years already. I like, was 1995. Uh, it's like, why did you, why didn't you put it in your CV? And it was like, I don't know. I didn't think that was relevant. It's like, are you kidding me? Like, you had a full on career and you're not putting it. It's like, yeah. And from then on, I was like, I'm a mother. <laughs> I, was, like, I was proud of it, you know, like, uh, and, and, um, uh. Yeah, so like after that, I wasn't, I was definitely not hiding anymore. Um, I, I got all my best jobs after that as well. Uh, and then, of course, I carried on with my, you know, academia. I was, like you said, I was a lecturer at UCL for five years. I was lecturing mathematics. And I think the second moment of realization came when one of, one of my, like every, I every year had 100 students and then one year, one of they always would like take sneaky pictures of me. At the time, I wasn't even on social media. And then one of these posts went viral. And, yes. uh, and at first, I was like, what is this? <laughs> What's going on? Uh, and I was like, I don't need any of this. And then obviously, like, it was after a while, a second moment of realization where I was like, hold on a second. This is amazing, you know? Like, I, I made it so far because I managed to you know, do like, just be true to myself and really be true to all my talents. You know, like I always loved modeling, so I always kept up with it. I never gave, gave it up for whatever else I was doing it. And, and same for my studies, I didn't give it up for modeling. You know, and I think it's important to like, you know, just believe it, you know, it's, where, where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, yeah totally, totally. Sorry, I'm looking at my notes and my phone. <laughs> Um, let me ask you this, was, was there a particular time where, where you felt like, okay, I've been doing this, I'm modeling, I'm, I'm traveling, was, was there like a specific moment where you were like, wow, like it's happening, you know, was it a runway show, were you working with a photographer, you know, did, did you have that moment where you're like, okay, yeah, look, I'm doing it. Like, uh, I'm here. <laughs> uh, Halima, was, it, was yeah. there a moment like that for you? I, yes, actually, now that I think back, absolutely. I would say my moment would probably be my first ever um, runway show was actually for Yeezy season five. And that was thanks to Kirby and Rothfield for inviting me. <laughs> um, and I remember going to the fitting. I was so excited. It was my first time meeting Kim Kardashian. And I was texting all my girlfriends back in Minnesota, like, oh my God, she is she is very petite in, in real life, but she looks exactly the same. <laughs> and I couldn't believe like I was getting to do this in New York City again for the first time. And I, I get to the fitting. The first outfit didn't work. So of course, like, you know, I want. I, I knew it was important that if I'm going to do fashion and I'm going to stick to my roots and, and you know say okay this is what it's like to dress a modest model like I had to stick with it. So of right. course when the opposite doesn't work out you can't just compromise and say oh I guess this one time it's okay. Do you know what I mean? So I walked away from that. Denise and I went back to the hotel 
and no kidding you guys like around 10 p.m we get a phone call and they're like come back and Kareen and the team and you know Kanye's team everybody came together and, and put together this other look for me to try on and of course that became the look that I walked in the show and I'm so grateful even though it was hard to walk away from such a big show I'm so grateful <laughs> we did because that that moment cemented to me that I didn't have to conform, that I didn't have to change for fashion, and that the right stylists, the right teams that I wanted to work with, there are people who are gonna work with me based off of what I'm comfortable wearing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, and then that moment became, I mean, talk, Petra was talking about a viral moment, and I will never forget thinking, it just keeps coming. Like, I would fresh my Twitter page and Instagram page, and every single like minute, it was like, so many people were sharing that photo and you know it became such a moment and i'm so grateful i did it the right way good good i mean okay. you know i think i think it's interesting that you said you know you were you were able to stand by your feelings and your convictions and, and not feel that you could compromise or change it. you know that's that's something we, we strive to do is empower our talent and yeah, but know, it's because of IMG, Aaron, it, it absolutely is because I think what gave me that confidence to say, I'm going to walk away, it's not the right thing, is the minute I walked into your agency, it was a four-hour meeting, and it was, okay, what, what is the hijab to you? What is modesty to you? What are your wardrobe requirements? And it was very much structured off of my comfort levels and also... <laughs> You know, like, I don't think IMG gets enough credit because, like, even my first meeting, I was like, I don't want to move to New York. I don't want to move to Milan. I don't want to move to a fashion capital. I want to stay in Minnesota. And I think for a lot of beginning models, that would have killed your career then and there. Like, what do you mean you want to stay in Minnesota and work in fashion? You know, you can't do that. But you guys gave me the opportunity and the confidence to make my own path in fashion. You know, like, here's my values. Here's you know, what I feel comfortable with. And I don't have to stray away from that in order to be successful. You know, you have to have the right team to give you that confidence to walk away from jobs. Right if it's on. Right, you know? right on, that's so lovely to hear. Amanda, what about you? What were your thoughts? Was, was there that specific moment in time when you were like, wow, I am a key ear. Doing it. <laughs> there, there are three that that come to mind right away. Um, one was my first big moment in fashion, which was opening and closing Prada. It was, um, yeah, in 2013. That's a moment, <laughs> and, that is a moment. <laughs> and it was so, um, it was such a big surprise. I mean, they keep everything under lock and key. So I, I didn't even know I was opening until they were like, Amanda, we need you in front. Like, get in line, we need you up here. And I was like, what, what? And they were just like, go. Oh. So, <laughs> there was no time to like register what was really happening until until after I I was out there. I was just like, wow, I just, I can't believe this. <laughs> what, was your, what was your second moment? You said there were a few. And I didn't know I was closing either. They did line up as the show was going. So I just, I had no idea what was happening. It was, it was surreal. It was crazy. For, for those and of then, you. Um, moment for those of you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> is when I got, sorry, is when I got to, I shot with um, Merton Marcus and I've always been a huge fan of Daria Werboi. Mm -hmm. And I got to actually shoot one picture with her and Maria Carlo, which was so surreal to me because I remember looking back and being like, I wonder what it is to be one of those girls, you know? I <laughs> like for the longest time I was kind of like late taking off in my career. My career took off at twenty six. So mm -hmm. um so the girls that, you know, were working that were my age had already accomplished so much and I just mm -hmm. couldn't believe that I was on set with that day was unbelievable. It was like uh, Laura Stone was there, Maria Carlo was there, and uh, Kate Moss was there. And wow! <laughs> it was crazy. Okay, so 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 that that qualifies. That's definitely one of those. And you know, for for um, the IMG Models Channel subscribers, just so you know, to open a show is huge. Mm -hmm. To close a show is huge. To walk a show is huge. 
but to open and close is like mm -hmm. a true, true moment, sort of, you know, a defining one, one might say. Uh, Pietro, how about you? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> first of all, I, I like to say that what Halima said really resonates with me, you know, like uh, staying true to who you are, uh, no matter what, is what makes you unique, uh, and what ultimately will uh, make you stand out. Uh, and I had many moments like that, you know, like you were saying, you walked away from a big show. I walked away from like many big job offers in my life because I had to teach a class or mark papers or uh, you know like do an exam whatever it was and it, it was always like it, that was always encountered with like oh really like it's really difficult to explain because sometimes it's something that maybe it's so minor uh, but you know compared to like opportunity uh, yeah. but it's not mine for you like it's not minor for who you are uh, right. and then in the end you know it's a risk they take, but like, in every, like everything in life, you know, like big benefits only come from risks. Um, so totally. It's totally true. And, and in terms of like my uh, moment of realization, I don't know. Like it's, it's 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 hard to tell. Like probably like one of them is definitely when I booked uh, my first uh, George Armani show. Um, mm -hmm. I was like 18. Like, that's like like 13, 13 years ago. Like, I can't remember. I remember that was the first time I like, I'm like, you know, like thrown out on the runway. Like, wow, what's going on? Uh, it's like that, that kind of moment that uh, like this happened. Um, but you know, like also like many like shoots that I've done, like I think there's the reason like one specific moment is sometimes you have like a moment of epiphany, you know, like you, right. it's like you just carry on with your life and then suddenly it's like, oh, you shit, like I'm actually doing this. It's like, what is it? Uh, but yeah, I, I, I like to have these moments as often as possible because I think it's important to be always grateful, always mindful of where, what you're doing and where you are and mm -hmm. what you've accomplished and also how much more you can do it as well. You, know, like, yes. you have to be reminded all the time. Okay, so I guess my next question would be, you know, how do you, whether it's in fashion, whether it's in in um other aspects of your life what do you how do you sort of set goals for yourself so that you feel like you're continually moving forward you know moving moving towards that next big job or you know that how do you how do you motivate yourself to to continue i would say mm -hmm. Alima. Hmm. <laughs> well, I just, I just finished my happy hour with the ladies. Um, we have our team like group chat with all my agents, Denise, Libby, so all my girls. Um, and we, we basically, I think that keeps me motivated, like seeing the input my agents have and, you know, people like even my close girlfriends or like my mom, that's how I get inspired and like motivated, you know? Okay, so this year I walked this many shows, this year I did this many campaigns, or like my trips with UNICEF, whatever it is, right? Next year, ideally, like I wanna make sure that, you know, I do 10 more, you know, in each, right. you know, or, or maybe work with a new editorial or like new team that maybe I haven't worked with, or a new brand. So constantly like having meetings with your team, um scheduling those happy hours to just catch up and also ask them like okay what areas do you think i can improve on um and honest input is so hard to come come by but you know like when you have somebody in your life that can tell you honestly like okay i think Halima, you can benefit from taking an acting class or maybe a voiceover class that type of stuff will help you in your career whether it's an interview you know and i've done so many different like lessons and just continuing to practice and um, that keeps me motivated. Amazing. You know, um, something we say at IMG, all of us as managers, and, you know, the more we know, the better we can all move forward and work together. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's about keeping the lines of communication open and, and mm -hmm. truthful and transparent. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if, if everybody's feeling confident and they're best and they're clear on what's going to happen, you know, they're able to they're able to go for it uh what mm -hmm. about you amanda um so 
I really enjoy incorporating some kind of an, an adventure into all of my trips that I do now. Um, mm -hmm. My last one, I went to South Africa to shoot. For I remember. <laughs> yeah. So I went to a baby rhino orphanage and I donated part of my um, day rate from Marks and Spencer's to save mm -hmm. baby orphan rhinos. And I helped take care of them for a week. So that was a mistake. <laughs> I remember because you had to come straight back to New York for a job. I did, yeah. Your, yeah, and we changed your hair for the job. And, and yeah, you have like, it's getting blonder and blonder. As you can well, you see. are on the West Coast, so it's, you know, that sunshine will do it. Um, yeah. Pietro, how do, you, how do you stay, you know, positive and moving forward in your career? And I mean, obviously, like, uh, the, the exciting thing about the modeling career is that nothing is really a, fi a fixed path, you know? You never know what's right. gonna happen next. You have high moments, you have low moments. And I think the important thing is to like stay consistent with, you know, the work input you have, uh, you put like, and the ideas. And obviously like, I always have lots of ideas and I, I always like, like Halima was said, the good thing uh, that you can you can do is like, talk with people, talk with your agents, uh, like throw the, idea, the ideas back and forth and like get feedback, yeah, the, like, the honest feedback, yeah, it's hard to come by. But it's very important to always listen because, like, sometimes you're so stuck in your in your view and your ideas that you need to really see like uh, area of view and see what other people think as well. Uh, yeah. That's for sure very important. The big picture, the big picture, the aerial view. I like seeing aerial view better than big picture. I think it sounds so much aerial view. Yeah, that's a nice aerial view. The aerial <laughs> yeah. view of my career. <laughs> Um, so you know what, just just as we're we're getting ready to finish up, I would say, you know, if everybody could just give give a little bit of direction or thought to you know our our YouTube subscribers about how they can stay open, stay positive, you know, find find their career, find their path, you know, what's what's a quick tip you would say, Halima? Oh, okay. I think the easiest tip, and this is something my second grade teacher used to tell me, you know, because um, I was like, English is too hard to learn. I think I'm just going to not do it. And then I remember she'd always just be like, if you don't do the work, the work doesn't get done. So just remember, please, dreams don't work unless you do the work. So make sure that you are, you know, investing in yourself and don't use, I think the biggest mistake any of us can make is using this current situation, COVID-19 being at home and thinking about it as some type of vacation. This is not vacation. This is time for you to invest in yourself, use this extra time to practice interview skills, practice, you know, it could be etiquette skills, just do anything that makes you feel, you know, your absolute self, best self. But the biggest mistake I think any of us can make is sitting at home and thinking, I'm just gonna, you know, just, treat it as vacation no 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 no. get to reading study up learn about the industry that you want to pursue do your homework because dreams don't work unless you put in the work that is amazing i just got like goosebumps <laughs> <laughs> it is easier said than done it is easier said than done but you know you have to invest in yourself uh amanda for me i would talk. say <laughs> <laughs> to keep a close group of people in your life who are super strong, super motivated to learn and to try new experiences and to push you when you're like too timid or nervous to try them yourselves. And um, you're just gonna go so far and you're gonna help each other, which is so important. Wow, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. And, and you know, we'll close with Pietro. No pressure. <laughs> No problem. Right. Uh, I mean, um, there are a few important things, I think. Uh, one of them is obviously being versatile and uh, adapt to the situation. And uh, it's many people just like, you know, like like I said, maybe you have like, you've done something so far and you want to carry on that way, but the circumstances change and it's important that you are adaptable and you understand, you know, like whatever work you've done in one direction, it's now done, it still makes you better as a person, even if it doesn't lead anywhere, and then just move on. 
uh, and onto like a new objective. This is obviously very important. And I always say like one of the things I always say is like just get on with it. You know, whatever you're doing, get on with it. Uh, people <laughs> before they take action, they want to figure out every step of the way. Uh, and sometimes you just have to go with it and and really just focus on the work. Um, uh, I always compare it. I always have some uh, like school references, you know, like so when you're in school, there's always someone who's like writing out all the notes and make and then rewriting them with like different color pencils. Uh, and they're like, you know, they have all these different systems and they're not actually focusing on learning anything. It's all like preparation. Uh, so sometimes you just have to like really jump into the bulk of the work. Uh, because it doesn't, it's not enough to feel like you're working. You actually have to do something substantial, rather than just preparation. So these are the, the most important things for me. Wow. Um, I have to say that was that was a great close from all three of you. <laughs> that was How is it over story. already? It's over already. <laughs> over already. Yeah, I'm glad we're having fun. <laughs> I'd like to thank you guys for joining us today and anybody that's dropped by IMG Models YouTube channel, please feel free to like and comment and subscribe. And, you know, we're looking forward to the next uh, episode of Model Logs. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for having us. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 -bye.